All right, so in the last video, we actually tracked this data, and um, you guys are good. Um, we actually tracked track this data, so now I wanna show you how to take this data over to Microsoft Excel. Now, there's a couple of things that you're gonna have to do. I'm gonna go ahead and say open in, so you can just follow that, if you did it this way. And then we need to go down to graphical. So graphical is a complement to this particular um, uh, application. And you can do, we can do analysis in this application as well. I just go to Microsoft Excel because I think you guys should know how to use Excel very well because you can do like all your math in Excel. All right, so we have this. Um, we could do graphs and tables. So I can do one graph. I can do graphs and a table. You'll see the data there. I can just do a table. You'll see the data here. But what I want to do is I just want to select on data. And then I want to open this data in. Microsoft Excel. There it is. Copy to Excel. So now that it's in Excel, you'll see that we need to save a copy in the upper right hand corner there. Um, I am going to save mine to Dropbox. You don't have to save yours to Dropbox. You know what? In fact, I'll save it to my OneDrive. I won't save it to OneDrive because I'm not connected. So I will save it to my Dropbox. And I definitely will um, su suggest that you save this to some cloud mechanism. So I'm going to go to Physics Term 8 and I will uh, create a folder. Or I can just, yeah, I'll create a folder and I'll call this PWM or PWM for pulse width modulation. Um, I'll do raw count. And then I'll also say and angular velocity. So I'm just going to create that folder and I'm going to save this in that folder. Save it. Hey Siri, set the timer for four minutes. So I'm just going to open up each one of these, okay? The first thing that we want to do, you'll see that we have data here, and I, I guess I could just go ahead and take this into, uh, let me see here, paper by 53. I'll create a new journal here and just open this like so. All right, so you'll see that we have... We have x, y, x velocity, and y velocity. Um, you may or may not remember, but we def we can define um, our angular velocity based on those. So we could say s. This is our arc length, s, and s is defined by theta as well as r. So we have r times theta. And so if we wanted to look at this, we could look at the change in S. And so the change in S would occur from S initial to S final over delta T. Okay. And we're going to call this the tangential velocity. And we can also look at the change in theta over the change in time. And we'll call this angular velocity. So that means all of these are vectors. So that's actually going to, that's, basically theta initial and theta final. So that's where we're getting our delta theta and delta s from. So just to be explicit here, I'll just say delta, you know, I really don't like it there. But delta s is equal to s final minus s initial. Delta theta is equal to theta final minus theta initial. And then delta t is equal to t final minus t initial. So that's all that means. And we just have two localized points, okay? So let's just go ahead and work that out. So we can write delta S over delta T equaling R delta theta over delta T. This is going to be our tangential velocity. That equals to R times omega. 
Okay, so um, it's not. Uh, let me just take those vectors off. So this implies that omega is equal to vt over r. Now, what is vt? vt is our tangential velocity, and it is the velocity that's going to occur tangent to this circle. So we call this vt, and it's going to have a vx and a vy. And so we can use Pythagorean, uh, Pythag the Pythagorean theorem to solve for that. And that is what we're going to do. So we'll end up with the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. And we'll have r. It is also solved using Pythagoras' theorem. So that's going to be x squared plus y squared. So it's kind of clear that vx squared plus vy squared over the square root of x squared plus y squared, that's going to be our angular velocity or angular speed. I'll call it angular speed since we're not, we're not concerned with the direction. So going back to Excel, that's what we're going to calculate right now. So what do we need first? We need R.